I knew this was a problem when I bought this bike. The front forks are leaking. If you come up to your front forks and you ever see this puddle of oil, don't just assume it's leaking out of the bottom here because if we just look right here from this angle, it kind of looks like it's leaking out of the bottom, but you scoot your eyes a little further north and you see here, you got all this grime build up around this dust seal up here. There's a seal below this dust seal that sits right about there that actually traps the oil in the fork. And if that fails, it pushes up and it leaks around the dust seal and then this whole thing is trash. Now these are pretty cheap to replace, but in order to replace them, you gotta take the front wheel off, the brakes disconnect, jack the bike up, disconnect the forks, and then the forks come out and you rebuild them. I'll show you how to do that in this video. Front tire popped off, no problem. Fender popped out, no problem. Getting there, just a pinch bolt, pinch bolt, pinch bolt, pinch bolt. I'm gonna break those two top nuts loose and it should just right out of there. These little bolts in the turn signals, they got a nut that sits down there, so all you have to do is just turn this eight millimeter bolt and then those pop out and you can just kind of let them hang there and do that to both sides. I did loosen these while it's on the bike. They were very tight. I ended up just using the old impact gun over there to just get them a little bit loose. But of course, when we go to tighten them down, we're gonna need to use the proper torque spec. Now, the only thing I should have left is just these little guys. They're so, so hard to see. Little caps there. We're gonna pop that cap out. Don't mind this little garbage switch. That was the previous owner. We're gonna pop that cap out and uh, loosen that bolt, take that out, loosen the one on this side, and these forks should just drop straight out of here. That's what this bolt looks like when you take that cover off. And all I did to take the cover off is just get a little screwdriver in there and gently pull on it, go around the edges, slow and steady. And that's what they look like. They just make the little bolt there look a little nicer I suppose these little guys are just a t6 and then I come out I don't know if you have to take them all the way out or not but I'm going to there's both of those last step here you got more of these caps whoop I hope I didn't lose that right there and you just take that guy out a little bigger than the other one maybe let's find out yep bigger than a six okay turned out to be an eight a little number eight on these guys here loosen it up and then this guy just slides right on out of there boom here's a system i came up with soft vice it's wood so it won't mar the surface if you've got metal put something soft so it won't hurt that it's a 24 on top here and this thing's under pressure so when i take it off it's probably going to just push into my hand a little bit so i want to be ready for that it's like a jack-in-the-box how many oh boy that's how many turns okay well don't let yours fall that was a mistake a little sleeve in there and we'll pull this little washer off up top the spring oh boy yep it's gonna make a big old mess that's why we got the newspaper over here put everything right there all i did is just dig a screwdriver down in here real soft and careful like and then boop pop that guy up that's our old dust seal, that's gonna go in the trash. Scoot your eyes right in there. You see this ring, this little metal one? This little metal ring is a retainer ring that holds that bottom seal in. So it just pops out like that. The ring we're gonna save, because we don't have a new one, but the seal, again, trash. And then, I think we gotta drain it first. Let's drain it first. Yep, just turn it upside down. And you can move the inner piston in and out a little bit and it'll help drain it. You just hear all that? Yep, just keep doing that till it's empty. Turn it over and wouldn't you know it, there's a T6 just floating around right in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. As I took it out, here's some more bits that came out. So anyways, here's the, this is the actual piston. Now that that's all out, I think, should yep just do that and it comes right out now this is what we got here this is your fork spring this is actually called a rebound spring on this piston here and the fork spring has a measurement on it you're supposed to measure and make sure it's at least 17 and three quarters inches ours is 18 so that's going to be fine we can reuse that spring Couple parts to check on here, and I apologize, my neighbor's power washing, so that's probably pretty loud. You got a piston ring right here, and you're gonna check this for wear. 
It's right there, right there. Check that for wear, make sure it's looking okay. It's got a couple of holes. There's actually a split there and you'll be able to compress it if you had to replace it. That split is how you would take it off. And then you've got a couple of bushings here. This is the fork bushing, this is the slider bushing. And then we've got our backup ring and that's the seal that we're replacing right here. Generally on these slider bushings, they're coated in Teflon. So if you can see a lot of copper, then you're gonna wanna replace it. Ours is probably too far gone to reuse, but I didn't buy them. So we're gonna go ahead and reuse them anyways. Scoot your eyes down. There's a little washer in there. This little washer is a crush washer, it's copper. That little bolt that we took out slides in there. And I imagine the manual would tell you to replace that, but I didn't buy that either. So I just went ahead and cleaned this up a little bit. I'm gonna put it right back here, and I'm gonna show you how all the bits fit into this fork tube. Probably a good idea to point out, this has, this these seals have two sides. There's a skinnier side and a more open side. That open side is gonna face down. So the other way to tell on this is it's beveled just ever so slightly the beveled end points up now this goes here we got the main bushing the slider bushing backup ring and the oil seal on and then the piston with the little oil stopper it's going to sit on the beveled end of that piston there little oil stopper and then it'll sit just like this so when it's all in there it'll sit right up there that bolt is what threads into that oil stopper, and then the slider goes on right like that. Well, I went ahead and took the other one apart, and well, <laughs> it, it turned into quite the fiasco. Take a look here. That's half of the bolt. Here's the other half of the bolt. I ended up having to drill it out because, um, well, I stripped it when I was taking it apart because it was so dang tight. Fortunately, I think I'll be able to get these threads out. Fortunately, got that out. The threads in this piston are not damaged, so I can reuse that. That'll save me some money. Jeez, that was a close call. And I went ahead and went and bought the new bolts just to replace on these guys. They're M8125 by 25 millimeters. And then I couldn't find copper washers, but I got the fiber washers eh, 516 will work it's it's pretty close so we're gonna put it all back together now you're looking at your tube there this guy your oil stopper it sits like this so the skinny end down just like that we end up putting our fork tube back in you're gonna put the piston down like that and that's gonna thread into the bottom that nut there threads into the bottom of this guy right sit just like that but it'll be sitting in a little oil stopper. So, make sure you put it back together right and just pay attention when you take it apart. Round 12 of getting this thing in here. I think this is the way to go, fellas. You're gonna wanna put this little oil stopper back on the piston and then you slide these gaskets up, oil the outside of this one now, and then with your tube, you're gonna just have it sitting like that so the slider can go boop and it's all gonna be lined up and you can put the bolt in up top here. At least that's that's my theory. I'll, I'll let you know. Round 342. Yeah, the way to do it here is to lay that flat, okay? You're gonna to wanna to lay it just like that. Slide everything in there, hold it together with six hands, turn it upright, then slide the bolt in through this hole and then as you're kind of holding everything, you just start to tighten that down and finally you get it. And then after you get it and it's all nice and tight, you feel real accomplished, but you still have the seal to deal with. You got to get this seal to be down into this beveled portion. And you can do, I've seen PVC pipe on YouTube, people knock that down. But the proper tool is a seal driver kit. And don't mind the mess, I've just made a huge mess in here. And so all you do is... Find the right size, I think these are 41 millimeters. And they'll clip in there on both sides. And they'll also clip around here. And then you go boop, 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 and knock that seal in. Something like this. 
You know you're done when you can see the groove in there for that little snap ring. Remember the one we took out here? That little guy. Once you can see the groove for him to sit in, that's how far you need to go. I got my snap ring in. I'm just going to use the back side of a pick to drop it down into place. Cool. Pull it up. Should be, yep, good to go. Now we just got to fill it here. I'm using this 10 weight fork oil and the book calls for 15.2 ounces. I got 15.2 I think. I got my funnel up top so I should just be able to pour this guy in here. Let it all drip out. Not seeing any leaks. Put the dust cover onto this one here. I'm gonna lubricate the outside of this a little bit just like we did with the other one and use our little seal driver to drive it on home. The spring here has got one side where they're closer together. It's a progressive rate spring, so you want that side facing down. Then your washer is going to sit on top like that, and your spacer is going to sit on top of the washer, just like that. You're going to pull this tube all the way up after dropping your spring in there. Throw your washer in, throw your spacer in, then you're going to push it down. And at the same time you're pushing down, you're going to get this cap tightened. Fellas, that's a four-handed job. you got to pull up on the tube, push down on this, get your socket on there, but eventually it'll go. Front forks are done. Show you what we did. Really simple. Once you get the uh, front wheel aligned, it helps bring those into where they're supposed to be. And what you do is you put the axle uh, in through this side. And then once it's all the way in, you're going to tighten those two uh, little bolts down there. Come over to this side, put the axle nut on, and then tighten these two bolts. Uh, I did 17 foot-pounds, 43 foot-pounds on the big bolt, and then 17 foot-pounds on the other side. Put the fender back on. Come up here, remember we had those little bolts here for these turn signals. Went ahead and threw those guys back on. And then we had these upper bolts there. Went ahead and put those back in. Put these new zip ties on this little switch here. Look how much better that is. Nah, it's not any better. And then tighten everything down on the retainer bolts there. So now, I'm gonna wipe off these seals so they're nice and dry. That way I can check for leaks. And then final thing, you're gonna to wanna to tighten these down. I think it's 22 foot pounds, somewhere in there, 22 foot pounds or so. Good example of why you should always be checking this stuff. Look how this fell down a little bit. That's no longer within the spec that it needs to be. When I was putting the front tire on, I think, it just kind of dropped the fork down a little bit. That side, it's it dropped down a little bit as well. Not as much, but that's still too low. So we'll loosen all the retaining bolts and slide her back up. Got that one nice and aligned now. The other one, same thing. You want the top of that tube just flush with the top of this deck. And that's job well done on the forks. There I was just hammering away. Ended up doing a little damage to the vise here. 